Hey guys, Rick Stone here from Stony Acres Gardening. Welcome to my channel. It's January and it's time to actually get some seeds planted indoors, but it's time to, to get some things going. And so I'm always excited when January rolls around because that's the beginning of my gardening season. So we're going to talk today about nine seeds that you can be planting indoors in your indoor seed starting setup. Uh, in the month of January. This video is intended for those of you that live in zones five, six, and seven, but more important than your garden zone is your frost date. I really don't care that much about your garden zone. I do care about when your frost dates are. So this video is intended for those of you that have a frost date, last frost date in the spring from April 1st to about May 15th. That six week time frame, if that's when your frost date is, you need to start thinking about getting some seeds planted during the month of January. Now, for those of you that don't want to watch the whole video, I know there's some of you that are like that. There is a written list in the description of this video that you can go see what I'm going to be talking about in this video. So I have taken the nine crops and broken them into three different segments. For these first three, all of which are in the onion family, you absolutely need to get these guys planted as soon as you can in January based on when that frost date is. So the first one on the list is onions. Now onions, seedlings for onions, need to go out in your garden somewhere between four to six weeks before your last frost date. So for example, my last frost usually lands somewhere between May 7th and May 15th, which means I need to be getting my onion transplants in the garden somewhere between about the 25th of March to the 1st of April. So I usually kind of target that April 1st time frame. So if I want transplants out in the garden at that time, I need to be starting those seedlings about eight to 10 weeks before plant out time, which lands me solidly at the beginning of January. So I need to be starting my onion seeds indoors at the beginning of January if I want transplants that are in good enough shape to go out in the garden right around April 1st. So that's kind of our target. Now with leeks, which are also part of the onion family, you've got a little bit more flexibility. Leeks really only need to go out about three weeks before your first frost date. So same idea, you want about eight weeks or so before you plant them out in order to, to make that all happen, that timing wise. So usually with leeks, we can, we can wait just a little bit later in January. So for me, I'm going to be planting my leeks somewhere around about the 21st of January. That will give them eight weeks and then they can go out uh, sometime in mid-April. The other one that is in the onion family is an herb and that is chives. So chives are a perennial, so it's nice. Once you get them established, you really don't have to replant them year after year. But if you're gonna start some chives this year, the seeds take a good long time to get growing and get established. They're long germinators, they take a while to germinate. And so you wanna get those guys started about eight to 10 weeks before you plant them out in the garden. And you wanna be planting those about four weeks before your last frost date in the spring. So onions, leeks, and chives absolutely have to be started in January if your frost dates land in that April and May timeframe. So make sure you get those guys started indoors. That's your first priority. The next group of seeds that we're going to talk about are probably the most sensitive of the uh, seedlings that we're going to talk about. So when I say sensitive, meaning that they're, they're, they're going to be a little bit more frost sensitive, they're going to be a little bit more cold sensitive. And so if you're going to plant these in January, they're going to be ready to go out sometime in March and you're probably going to need a little protection for them. So the plants that we're talking about here are lettuce, spinach, and parsley. Lettuce being the most tender of those three all of them are going to appreciate some protection in March. So if you're going to plant some of these indoors in January and you want to set them out eight weeks later in March, you're going to want to protect them with a fabric row cover, maybe a hoop house, or even a cold frame. Any of those are going to give them the protection that they need for that month or so of still relatively severe weather, you know, from mid-March to mid-April. Things will start to kind of moderate when, once we hit April and you'll be okay. But with lettuce and parsley and spinach, you want to go 
probably mid-January for most of us is when we want to actually get those planted. And then you do need to plan on having some protection for those because those are not as hardy as some of the other plants that we're talking about. Now the last on the list are probably the most hardy of the leafy greens that are available for us to plant this time of year. And that is kale, Swiss chard, and then a Chinese green called totsoi. So kale and Swiss chard, both very hardy. You probably could start some seeds indoors in January and put them out in March and, and they would probably be okay. I don't particularly advise that. I would still like you to give them some protection, a fabric grow cover at the very minimum, or maybe a hoop house over the top of them that is going to help them to grow faster and be stronger. Um, but both of those are very hardy and you probably could get away with planting them directly in the garden in March, assuming the weather has allowed for that. The other, Totsoi, is an Asian green that is, it, it tastes very similar to bok choy. So it, and, and it looks, the leaf itself looks very similar to bok choy, but it grows differently. It, it's more of a rosette. It looks more like spinach. Uh, when, when, you, when you look at it, the plants look a little bit more like spinach. Again, a very hardy plant, a really good one to plant early in the spring like this. It will appreciate the protection of a hoop house, a cold frame, or some fabric grow cover, but definitely you can get those planted. Again, I target with kale and with uh, tot soy and Swiss chard. I try to get those started about mid-January so that I can put the first planting of those out in mid-March. Now, if, you are, if your timing is such that you are starting some of these greens in early January, there isn't any reason why you couldn't put a second planting in in late January as well so that you have some succession. So for example, today I'm going to plant for you guys some kale, but I'm only going to start four kale plants right now because I don't want a ton of kale. Number one, you don't want a ton of kale. They're pretty productive anyways, but I also don't want a whole bunch of, of kale that comes ready to harvest at the same time. So I'm gonna start four plants now. I'll probably start four more plants in another three or four weeks, okay? So why don't we go through, and I'll actually do a little planting demonstration for you here. So I have some Vates kale seeds, and these are actually seeds that I saved myself. Uh, and they're about two or three years old. And I've got some containers here. When you're starting your own seedlings, the very first thing that you need to do is you need to pre-moisten the soil. We want that soil to be moist before we put it in the, con in the container. Anything that's either cocoa core or peat moss based is a little bit what we call hydrophobic. So it tends, when it's kind of in packed into a container, it tends to actually repel water. And so we, before we put it in a container, we wanna make sure that we get it evenly moist. And so you're gonna put some water in, stir it around, and get that moisture even throughout the, the, the soil. Then if you want to, you can actually add a little bit of your own homemade compost. Make sure you sift it first. We want it to be pretty fine because we're using a seedling mix here, not a potting soil. We want to be using a seedling mix as the base. And so we don't want to, by adding compost, we don't want to add a bunch of rough material. So make sure you sift that so we have some nice, fine material that these seedlings can grow in. Then you want to put them in the containers. Make sure that your containers are clean. I always like to clean my containers out at the first of the season. That makes sure that we don't have any disease or pest problems in them. And we're going to put those in. We want to tamp it down, but we don't want to press it in. We don't want to pack it in really tight. And make sure you leave a little bit of room at the top of the containers. And then is what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two seeds in each of these containers. One primary, one backup, just in case we have a germination problem. So we'll put two in each of these and those are planted. And then we're gonna take just a little bit of our pre-moistened seedling mix and all we need is about a quarter of an inch. So we don't have to put a lot on there. We're gonna cover those guys up and then we're gonna spread that out just like that pretty easy. And then is what we want to do is give it a squirt. So we want to make sure that that upper layer of soil that we just put on is really moist and ready for those seedlings to germinate. So we'll put that on and then we're going to cover these guys up. And I like to use a little plastic wrap. Now before everybody goes crazy on me about using plastic wrap, I reuse this. So this gets used for 
I mean, this one here I've been using for five plus years. So we're going to cover that up. The reason why we're going to use plastic wrap is that will help to keep the moisture in. So we want to keep that moisture, especially on the top layer of the soil, nice and high until those seedlings germinate. And then once a day, maybe twice a day, depending on what your indoor conditions are like, we're going to come in and just give those another squirt. And then we're going to put these guys indoors where it's warm under our lights. We don't need to turn the lights on for a couple of days, but before the seedlings start to germinate, you want to turn your lights on. Then once they've germinated, uh, you'll pull this plastic off and we are off and running. You should be ready to get those transplanted out in the garden about six to eight weeks later. All right, so there you go. That is the nine seeds that you should be planting in January with a little bit of a demonstration for you as well. I do want to just mention really quick before I go that we have our seed starting workshop happening again this year. So I'm super excited about this. This is our biggest event of the year. People love it. Last year we had almost 300 people that joined us with this seed starting workshop and we are going to be doing it again this year. So the date this year for 2024 is February 12th. So that will be the date that we start the workshop. It is a paid workshop. It's very inexpensive. It's only $29. It's an eight day workshop. I have seven days where I give you some instruction. So we do about a half an hour's worth of instruction on seed starting every day for seven days. Little bite-sized pieces for you to learn a little bit more about seed starting. All of those videos are pre-recorded. So this isn't a live event. You'll be able to watch those videos anytime during the day. And in fact, I leave them available for you to replay them for about six months afterwards. And so you'll be able to watch this anytime you want. Uh, those seven days will have good instruction for you. There's a workbook that goes along with it that you can print. And then on day eight, we actually do a live Q&A session. So I'll get on some Zoom calls and you guys can come in and ask me any questions that you have related to seed starting. We'll give away a few prizes at that time as well. So this is a really fun event. And again, we are starting on February 12th, 2024 and the cost is $29. Now, is what I want to ask you to do right now is go sign up for the wait list. Getting names on the wait list gives me an idea of how many people we're going to have for the event. And so if you could get signed up for that wait list, that is really beneficial for me so that I can make my plans, have the right number of staff in place, the right number of prizes to give away and things like that. So there is a link down in the description of this video, or if I did things right, you should have a link right up here as well that you can click on uh, to go sign up for that wait list. I just need your name and your email address. I'll send you a few emails ahead of time so that you guys kind of know what we're doing and can be ready for that event that again starts on February 12th. So get signed up for the wait list right away for our seed starting workshop. All right, my friends, that's all I have for you for this week. Get some seeds started. It's time. I'm excited for another gardening season. I've had my month off and now it's time to, uh, to get going again. So get some seedlings started and uh, let's get going on gardening again this year. All right, that's all I have for you for this week. Everybody have a fantastic week. Happy gardening.